Today, I wanna to talk about a large announcement by Framework, the manufacturer of laptops, known for a few things here, including things like longevity, repairability, and probably the most important, customizability. For those of you that are unaware of Framework laptops, they're known in the consumer electronics industry as a company who's trying to tackle the planned obsolescence of other companies that design laptops by creating laptops that are modular and that you can easily repair, upgrade, even individual components rather than having to replace the entire device. Think swapping out CPUs, motherboards, various different peripheral ports, screens, what have you. However you want to customize it, you can do that. The big announcement here is that they've received a Series A1 funding amount of $17 million by big names. They're announcing that $18 million in new funding from investors are going to be made with $17 million in the Series A1 round, which is led by Spark Capital, Buckley Ventures, Anzu Partners, Cooler Master, which a lot of you might be familiar with, and Pathbreaker Ventures that are participating. We're going to talk about this, but let's first talk about what a Series A round and a Series A1 round is. For those of you who aren't investors, but there's actually something interesting because you yourself may be actually able to invest in framework. And we're going to talk about some other people who have in the past. But anyways, a Series A is typically given to a company's first significant round of venture capital financing. It can be followed by a word round investment or financing. The name refers to a class of preferred stock sold to investors in exchange for their investment. It is usually the first series of stock after common stock and common stock options issued to company founders, employees, friends and family, and angel investors. So here it says it's traditionally a critical stage for funding of new companies. Typically, there's somewhere between 10 to 30% of the company given up at this particular round. This is a big commitment by the investors here. And Framework says they've continued to increase sales and market shares substantially each year as the industry broadly has struggled. It's a clear commitment to the longevity as it is resonating with, with other people clearly. And the Series A1 round came after a Series A round, which was made two years ago. We shared a strategy around fundraising, which is to raise as little as possible and focus on funds on effectively expanding the reach of their mission. Now, a big player in here is the Cooler Master, a key strategic partner turned investor. So they were partnering and clearly have seen some sort of potential in having an investment into framework, having been both a supplier for our framework laptop 16 thermal system and the first company to join the framework ecosystem with a compatible product, a case that enables laptop mainboard reuse. We have additional collaborations with, with the Cooler Master team in incubation now. For those of you who are unaware, Cooler Master actually sells a bunch of computer peripherals and products as well with a pretty terrible website, in my opinion, because it takes forever for it to load. After about 10 seconds, I can finally view the products here to tell you they have cooling cases, power supplies, peripherals, furniture, monitors, and other system components. Cooler Master actually has been around quite a while, so it's a fairly large company that's investing in Framework and Framework's mission with places all around the world, including the Asia Pacific, North America, Europe, and South America. So what's the point of this investment and this Series A1 round? Well, there's definitely a few things. Most companies that do this are focused on a few things. So let's talk about those things. Number one, companies that look for investment are typically hoping for expansion and growth. By getting investment, hopefully Framework will be able to expand its operations, production, and even enter in new markets. Number two, market and sales. If you can get more brand awareness and sales from that awareness, then you reach a broader audience. Again, important. You need a lot of money in order to do marketing. Another big reason you get investments is for infrastructure growth. This is a computer manufacturer. Therefore, a manufacturing facility is important. Things like improving supply chain efficiencies, getting a product out with better quality and faster delivery is always important. That's another thing that they can invest with with this money. Another reason companies or organizations do these types of investments are for partnerships. Not only do you want the cash that comes with the investment, but you also create strategic partnerships with these other companies that are investing in you, which can help lead to collaboration, sharing resources, or even accessing newer markets. And finally, a little bit different, and we're going to get to this because we haven't talked about it yet. There's some community engagement that may be happening. And this one isn't typical. 
of these types of investment funding, but in order to fuel the growth of this seemingly growing and growing company and to keep it afloat for long-term success, it is of great value that they were able to secure these funds. Again, 17 million, but they talked about 18 million. The other big wild thing is if you smash that like button, it'll really help me out. So make sure to do that. Yes, you might be able to invest in framework yourself. In addition to the 17 million of funds they've raised from traditional investors, they're raising $1 million from a community round to enable 100 people to invest $10,000 each into framework. Now don't go crazy and start pulling out your credit cards as there are strict rules for this and who's actually eligible to invest these $10,000 into framework. We're gonna get into that in just a moment. As it says here, investing in startups is approximately the riskiest place imaginable to put your money and statistically the most likely outcome for any individual in an early stage startup investment is to become worthless. So keep that in mind because not only that, you have to meet the qualifications by the SEC or the US Securities and Exchange Commission. An accredited investor is qualified if they reach certain financial and or professional criteria. And what is that financial criteria? Well, you have to have a net worth of $1 million, excluding your primary residence, aka where you live, individually or with a spouse or partner. So if you have a net worth of $1 million, you can invest that $10,000. Otherwise, another criteria is going to be income over $200,000 individually or $300,000 with a spouse or partner in each of the prior two years and reasonably expects the same for the current year. Now that's gonna knock a lot of people out, but I wanna briefly talk about another person who has invested in the past with Framework, and that's right, Linus from Linus Tech Tips. Let's take a look at how much he invested. They promised upgradability. They promised sustainability. They were gonna change the industry, and all they asked for was a small loan of... I would Wait, how much was that? A small loan of, well, what's almost exactly $225,000 that seems to be Linus's stake in Framework. Now, this is over a year ago at this point. Who knows if Linus has more into it? And I don't know if it's disclosed on how much percentage Linus or Linus's media company owns in this, but Linus has some sort of stake here as disclosed in the Framework Investment Update video called I Made a Bad Decision. I'll put it in the description below if you want to check that out. But this is a big deal for a seemingly small company trying to break into the computer manufacturing industry. And the way it seems to be doing this is things like competitive advantages, focusing on that longevity, repairability, and sustainability, being different from the rest. No one else really offers a good modular and customizable laptop like Framework does. They're clearly following consumer trends. And this all seemingly is making for a good investment, at least for the investors that are participating in this joint effort. Anyways, if you don't meet that threshold that we talked about earlier, there is a way you can still help and join the team. It says right here, there's one other way you can participate in our mission, which is to join our team to actually drive the growth that our new funding enables. We're adding a few key roles across framework, including a product man marketing manager, a supply chain manager, and you can check out all the open roles at the careers page. We're eager to fix this industry together as quickly as we can. Just like I was talking about marketing, and supply chain are going to be important commitments. So it makes sense why they're looking for people to fill those roles. Now, I haven't personally used a framework laptop, but I know one great thing is that the do-it-yourself edition that isn't pre-built comes standard with Linux, and you can actually configure that however you want, including which type of Linux operating system you want, aka none, you bring your own, you don't have to have Windows on it, you can install whatever you want. They show Ubuntu and Fedora on the left. But the great part of this is they're actually focused on making hardware that is compatible and works right out the gate with Linux. Can't say that about many hardware vendors as it is typically a afterthought. But I do want to know what you think about this framework venture and investment round. I also want to know from those of you who have used a framework laptop, what do you think? Can these seemingly powerful and customizable laptops really break in through the market and get their mission across for the freedom of repair and customization. I'd love to hear from you. Think about subscribing below for more content like this. And I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, 
and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.